Hi everyone, I'm Pratha Garpoti. I'm a research associate for gender mainstreaming at the Action for Climate and Environment Unit at UNDP India. The video I'm presenting today is on understanding the linkages between gender and environment. Uh, I've divided the presentation into three parts. So part one will be on understanding a few key terms relevant to our theme. Part two will give a brief overview uh, on the three key environmental issues, uh, namely climate change, biodiversity loss, land degradation, and desertification. And then part three will be on the gender matter, where we will try to understand the gendered impacts of the environmental issues, the major gender gaps in environment, women's role in environmental conservation. And then we'll conclude with uh, the benefits of mainstreaming gender in environment. Um, so coming on to the first part of the video, that is understanding some key terms relevant to our overall gender environment nexus. So gender refers to the roles, behaviors, activities, and attributes that a given society at a given time considers appropriate for men and women. It is socially constructed, and it is different from the biological and the physiological behaviors and characteristics that get assigned to the males and females at the time of birth via one's reproductive organs, chromosomes, and hormones. On the other hand, environment refers to the natural world around us, including the air, water, land, ecosystems, and all the living organisms. It includes both the physical surroundings as well as the complex interactions between humans and nature. The third important term that we need to understand is gender equality and women's empowerment. They're together referred to as GEWE. And GEWE recognizes that women and girls have historically faced systemic discrimination, unequal access to resources and opportunities, and limited decision making. So in this context, gender equality refers to ensuring that all individuals, regardless of their gender, have equal rights, opportunities, and treatments in all aspects of life, including social, political, economic, and cultural jobs. Women's empowerment, on the other hand, focus specifically on promoting the agency, the voice, autonomy, and rights of women enabling them to fully participate in society and make decisions that affect their life. Um, there are five different categories of women's empowerment. It can be social, it can be political, it can be educational, economic, and uh, psychological. And it basically includes enhancing women's access to education, healthcare, employment, financial resources, leadership roles, and participation and decision-making process. Um, gender equality is not just a women's issue, but should concern and uh, fully engage both men as well as women. And in this sense, equality between women and men is not just a human right issue, but it's also a precondition for what we call sustainable development. What exactly is sustainable development? Sustainable development refers to the development that seeks to meet the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The concept of the sustainable development emerged in response to the recognition that the traditional development approaches often led to environmental degradation, social inequalities, and economic instability. So this new approach of sustainable development it aims to integrate economic, social, and environmental dimensions in such a way that it promotes inclusive and sustainable progress. Um, coming on to part two of our presentation, that is the key environmental issues, where we will quickly go through three significant global environmental challenges that have far-reaching implications for our ecosystem, our communities, and the future generations. And the first one is climate change. The images I've selected for this slide are self-explanatory of the impacts and consequences of climate change. We can see forest fires, we can see storms and water scarcity and melting polar ice. But what exactly is climate change? 
climate change refers to the long-term shifts in temperature patterns, weather events, and global climate systems. It is primarily caused by the accumulation of greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere, mainly from human activities such as burning fossil fuels, deforestation, and industrial processes. And many people think that climate change mainly means just warmer temperatures, but temperature rise is only the beginning of the story. That is because the earth is a system where everything is connected and changes in one area can influence changes in all other areas. So the consequences of climate change now include, among others, water scarcity, severe fires, rising sea levels, flooding, melting polar ice, catastrophic storms, declining biodiversity, and intense desertification, land degradation, and drought. Our second key challenge is biodiversity loss. Biodiversity forms the web of life that we depend on for so many things, be it food, be it water, be it medicine, be it stable climate, be it economic growth and security. Over half of the global GDP is dependent on our nature and more than 1 billion people rely on forests for their livelihood. And land and ocean absorb more than half of all the carbon emissions. But our nature is in crisis due to a rapid increase in biodiversity. Up to 1 million species are threatened with extinction and that to many within the same decade. Irreplaceable ecosystems like parts of the Amazon rainforest are turning from carbon sink into carbon sources due to deforestation. And 85% of wetland, like the mangroves, which absorb large amount of carbon, have disappeared. And the main driver of biodiversity loss remains human's use of land, primarily for food production. Human activity has already altered over 70% of all ice free land. When land is converted for agriculture, some animal and plant species may lose their habitat and face extinction. Our third key environmental challenge is land degradation and desertification. Land degradation refers to the deterioration of the quality and productivity of the land, typically caused by human activities as well as natural processes. It involves the decline in the biological, physical, and chemical characteristics of the land, making it less suitable for agriculture, ecosystems, and other land uses. Desertification, on the other hand, refers to the process of land degradation in arid, semi-arid, and dry subhumid regions, resulting in the transformation of fertile land into desert-like conditions. And although it's primarily caused by a combination of both natural factors as well as human activities, but human activities do play a significant role in accelerating these issues. And some key causes include, first of all, deforestation, which means clearing forests for agriculture, logging, or fuel wood collection, which reduces vegetation. And without adequate vegetation, the soil becomes more susceptible to erosion and loss of fertility. Then the second reason is overgrazing, which is unsustainable livestock grazing practices where animals exceed the carrying capacity of the land. It can lead to the removal of vegetation and soil compaction, which disrupts the natural balance, reduces plant growth and promotes and promote soil erosion. The third one is unsustainable agriculture. So inappropriate farming practices, such as overuse of irrigation or imp proper uh, irrigation methods and excessive use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. It can degrade the soil structure, deplete the nutrients and increase salinization, rendering the land less productive. And then the fourth reason is land mismatch. Improper land management practices, including inadequate soil conservation measures, lack of watershed management, improper land use planning, can contribute to erosion, soil degradation, and reduce soil fertility. And while it is important to understand, um, while we've discussed the impacts of these key environmental issues, we cannot forget the human link. It's important to understand that these environmental issues extend beyond the realms of what we study in our biology or our geography textbook, because 
these key uh, environmental issues also have the human link just because of the social impact the socio economic impact um and by the scientific aspects of the environmental challenges such as climate change or biodiversity loss or degradation they are crucial in understanding the causes and consequences of these issues it's equally important to recognize their socio economic dimension and that is why we have four such impacts mentioned here the first one is the impact on human health and well-being so environmental issues can have profound impacts on human health and well-being poor air and water quality exposure to toxic substances and pollutants and natural disasters resulting from environmental degradation can lead to a range of health issues including respiratory diseases or waterborne or vector-borne diseases etc um environmental issues can also disrupt livelihoods and the ecosystem uh, e economic systems for example climate change can lead to crop failures reduced agricultural productivity and loss of livelihoods for farmers and rural communities additionally for communities dependent on natural resources for sustenance degradation of degradation of agricultural land deforestation etc can increase their vulnerability while negatively affecting their income and economic security then there is food security climate change including shifts in temperature precipitation patterns and extreme weather events can disrupt planting and harvesting seasons thereby leading to crop failure and impacting availability of food similarly desertification and land degradation can also reduce available arable land for agriculture and thereby limiting food production and thirdly there is also water scarcity due to droughts or over exploitation of water resources which can also hinder agricultural activities and impact food security and the fourth social impact is displacement and migration because we know that all of these environmental challenges while they are negatively impacting everyone's livelihood they also impacting the lives their home and often leading and forcing people to migrate to other areas depriving them from availing the basic necessity and while we're discussing all these social impacts do you think everyone is equally affected and equally impacted the answer is no because climate change impacts are differently distributed among different regions generations age classes income groups income groups occupations and gender and ultimately it is the marginalized communities including tribal communities or rural communities or low income and socio economically disadvantaged communities and among them women and girls who are disproportionately impacted in this presentation our focus is solely on women and children women and girls and to understand this further we will now move on to the part 3 of our presentation on why exactly gender matters and then how it actually fits into this context of environment uh like we've already said that while environmental degradation impacts the well-being of all it can have specific gender impact affecting women and men differently and disproportionately and that is because women's capacities to cope with the issues is hindered by societal norms cultural beliefs gender roles and lack of access to resources social economic benefits and decision making uh we're going to now use a gender lens to examine all the already discussed social impacts and see how those impacts are gender uh so first we look at the impact on human health and well-being um it's important to know that women are more exposed to indoor air pollution due to cooking with solid fuels women also face specific challenges due to the reproductive health as certain pollutants inadequate sanitation and contaminated water pollutants and sources can impact them more than men Additionally due to restraints on mobility and limited financial resources women also face barriers in accessing healthcare. Uh secondly for livelihoods and economic financial security 
women often face limited access to resources and assets necessary for livelihoods such as land, credit, and technology. And gender equality in land, gender inequality in land ownership, for example, can make it difficult for women to recover from land degradation or natural disaster. Limited access to markets and information can also prevent women from benefiting from alternative income generating opportunities related to environmental conservation and sustainable practices. Thirdly, we have food security. We already know that women play a significant role, not only in food production, but also processing, storage and preparation. And climate change and natural disasters have direct as well as indirect impacts on food security. Women, particularly in rural areas, may face heightened vulnerabilities due to their dependence on rain-fed agriculture and their role as the primary caregivers. Women also have limited access to information, resources, and adaptive strategies to cope with climate change impacts, making them more susceptible to food insecurity. And also, we should not forget that in many cases, Women not only eat last in our homes, but they also eat the least, thereby negatively impacting their own nutrition and food security. And the fourth one is displacement and migration. When all these environmental challenges force people to migrate to different areas, it can increase the care work that women usually uh, over uh, the care work that women are usually responsible for. This can increase because they usually are the ones who end up taking care of the elderly or the children or the sick in the family. And additionally, it can also lead to uh, limiting access to basic services like clean sanitation services, facilities, safe drinking water, uh, and access to healthcare and resources. Um, we also have a list of quick facts to substantiate what we've discussed in the last slide. We'll quickly go through this. Um, the World Bank estimates that 70% of the world's poor are women, and they're more likely to be affected by climate change impacts such as food insecurity and natural disasters. The United Nations Population Funds report uh, reports that approximately 75% of the displaced people globally are women and children who face increased risk of violence, exploitation, and disruption of their education and livelihood. The Food and Agriculture Organization states that women constitute about 43% of the agricultural labor force in developing countries, making them particularly vulnerable to the desertification, land degradation, and loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services that support agriculture. And even UNDP reports that women and girls bear the primary responsibility for collecting water in 80% of households without access to clean water sources, which becomes more challenging in areas affected by desertification. Um, so there are actually a few common gender gaps leading to gender equality, gender inequality, which are cross-cutting across the different environmental issues. The first one is decision making, women's participation and representation in environmental decision making processes, including policy formulation, planning and implementation, is usually lower than as compared as compared to men. This gap results in the underrepresentation of women's perspectives, their interests and priorities in environmental governance and policy. Secondly, rights and access. Women are often disadvantaged in accessing land, finance, resources, technology, and information, and other socioeconomic services compared to men. Thirdly, the needs and priorities. Women's needs and priorities are often undervalued or overlooked compared to those of men. Risk and vulnerability, we've already discussed how women, uh, how all these environmental issues disproportionately impact women. But this is also more, more so because of women's gendered work burden, their care responsibilities, their access to health, nutrition, food insecurity, and also poverty. And then there's roles and responsibility. So societal norms and stereotypes often assign certain roles and responsibilities to women. 
while prioritizing and valuing the roles traditionally assigned to men. This often leads to underrepresentation and invisibility of women's contribution in various fields, including environment. And then the last potential gender gap for environment is knowledge. Women's contributions to environmental conservation, sustainability, uh, sustainability etc., they're not adequately recognized or documented or celebrated. And this is due to limited data collection and research that fails to capture women's specific roles and contributions, leading to their invisibility in narrative and discussion. So while we've discussed the potential gender gaps in uh, environment, failing to acknowledge these gender gaps, the um, obviously has a lot of disadvantage uh, when we look at the environment uh, discipline basically. But we should not forget that women in fact play a really important role in environmental conservation. The first one is natural resource management. Women have a close connection to the land and often have deep knowledge of their local ecosystems and traditional practices for sustainable resource management. Women-led initiatives are more likely to focus on climate-smart agriculture, disaster preparedness, sustainable livelihoods, and the development of climate-resilient communities. Women also play a critical role in forest management, reforestation, and afforestation initiatives. Women-led community groups have shown success in conserving forest and preserving biodiversity. Um, women and women-led groups are also more likely to engage in organic farming, agroecology, traditional seed saving practices, and crop diversity. Their knowledge promotes ecosystem health and food security. Women are also responsible for water collection, management, and conservation via water resource planning, implementing water saving techniques and promoting efficient water use. And also women and women-led groups, they play a vital role in mobilizing communities to raise environmental awareness, promoting sustainable practices, water conservation, waste management, and climate adaptation at the grassroots level. Uh, failing, if we fail to acknowledge the critical role played by women and the gender gap mentioned earlier, it can lead to an increase in the already existing gender differences and inequality. And if those persist, it will be a missed opportunity for sustainable development. It will be a missed potential for social transformation. It might provide us with incomplete understanding of our environment, and it can also lead to ineffective policies and programs. And in this context, it is that's that is precisely why it's important that we mainstream gender in environment, because it will provide a better understanding of women's and men's needs, roles, priorities, and their relationship with the environment. Uh, it will support equal opportunities for women and men to access environmental benefits, and it will lead to the economic empowerment. Uh, it will recognize the different knowledge and skills of both women and men and how they can lead to uh, improved livelihood. And it will also create opportunities to maximize women's and men's contribution to environmental sustainability. Uh, I will quickly like to conclude my presentation by saying that recognizing and supporting the important role of women in environmental conservation is vital for addressing environmental challenges effectively. Promoting gender equality, women's empowerment, and equal participation in decision-making processes are essential for ensuring a more sustainable and equitable future. Uh, I will quickly play a short video on gender equality before I end this presentation, but I wish you all a great summer vacation and a learning experience. Best of luck. Gender inequality doesn't make sense on any level. By marginalizing the rights of women, we deny ourselves the opportunity to lift millions of men, women and children out of poverty, not to mention the chance of a just and fair world. From birth, girls and boys, women and men, 
are expected by society to play certain roles and behave in certain ways based on traditions, religion, and other beliefs. These behaviors are learned and shape the gender norms in a society. Unfortunately, in many countries, gender norms create disadvantages for women. Often, girls are not sent to school. When they become women, they then have limited ability to earn money or realize their potential. Rural women play a major role in agricultural development. However, in many developing countries, women cannot formally own land. Without land, they cannot get loans to invest in their farms or businesses. This also means they have no control over the use of land or the benefits that come from it. Men generally control the household decisions, like how to use the family's assets. These disadvantages are often reinforced by practices that limit women's access to services, like training. Cultural beliefs can also restrict women's opportunities, such as in parts of Zambia where women cannot paddle their boats as it is considered bad omen. The results of these issues? Women remain poor and agricultural production cannot reach its potential, perpetuating poverty and hunger in the developing world. The social norms that limit women's opportunities need to be understood and then changed. By taking a gender transformative approach, we can influence social norms and bridge the gaps in access to resources and services between men and women in a lasting manner. Change is needed on many levels and both men and women must be involved for it to happen. Research and development organizations need to invest in programs that promote gender equality alongside improving productivity and incomes. Policies need to be implemented that increase women's access to services and resources. Communities need to support women as farmers and as leaders. Increasing women's voice and agency is a valuable end in its own right. When development organizations, policies and communities support the success of women, we have a chance to reduce extreme poverty and boost shared prosperity for girls and boys, women and men around the world.